Ever wondered? Ever wondered how the current marijuana laws are affecting the prison population in the US? This question ignites significant conflict. On one side, we we have the faction that sees marijuana as a dangerous substance, deserving of its current Schedule 1 status. On the other, we come across supporters arguing that marijuana's harm is not greater than alcohol's, and that imprisoning non-aggressive lawbreakers is a waste of resources and a violation of civil liberties. This argument has attracted the attention of notable celebrities and reformers. More than one in 50 famous figures such as Drake and Kevin Garnett have publicly called for the release of prisoners serving sentences for non-violent cannabis violations. They argue that these laws disproportionately affect the poor and people of color, blocking their access to employment, housing, and education. This ongoing debate has been a profound issue in recent years. It's against this heated background that President Biden has recently made a significant move. President Biden, in a stroke of audacity, has made the unprecedented decision to set free inmates sentenced for non-violent marijuana infractions. This decision is a profound change in the American stance towards drug offenses and has been seen seen as long overdue. His choice has the potential to directly alter the lives of over 40,000 people currently housed in federal facilities due to marijuana offenses. These citizens, the majority of whom were convicted of non-aggressive crimes now have the potential for a shot at liberty and a fresh start. The reasoning behind this decision is deeply ingrained in the evolving perspectives towards marijuana, both legally and societally. A growing number of states are choosing to authorize or decriminalize marijuana possession, with a 2020 poll revealing 70% of respondents are in favor of expunging marijuana-related criminal records. This decision was not taken lightly. It was ignited by a heartfelt letter, signed by more than 150 renowned celebrities and artists, imploring Biden to liberate these inmates. The letter brought to the fore the systemic issues associated with marijuana convictions and the disproportionate impact on the disadvantaged, vulnerable, and racial minorities. The reactions to this decision range widely. The general public has shown significant support, with many highlighting the discriminatory aspect of marijuana convictions. Legislators, for the most part, have supported the initiative, although naturally, there are dissenting views. The inmates, for their part, are relieved and filled with hope. This decision to liberate these inmates signifies a profound step in confronting the enduring war on drugs. It acknowledges the fact that the consequences of incarceration for marijuana-related offenses have been far-reaching and often unjust. However, the implications of this decision are yet to be fully understood, and it begs the question, is there a political agenda hidden within? Let's try to unpack the profound magnitude of this decision. It promises far-reaching transformation and could act as a catalyst, igniting a chain reaction that begins within the confines of the U.S. prison system. We're talking about thousands of non-violent offenders potentially regaining their freedom, a move that could alleviate the chronic overcrowding problem, a problem that's only worsened due to the pandemic. But the effect of this decision extends well beyond prison walls. It could instigate a re-examination of marijuana laws countrywide, with an increasing number of states steering towards decriminalizing and legalizing cannabis, the federal government's position could lay down a formidable, let's not overlook the societal implications. This decision could help to mitigate the undue impact of marijuana-related offenses on marginalized communities, creating opportunities for those held back by a criminal record, offering many a chance at a clean slate. It's an attempt to address the imbalance in a system that has long been under for unfairness. But let's go beyond the surface. In the intricate dance of politics, every step serves a purpose. Could this be a strategic maneuver by President Biden to win over voters for the forthcoming election? It's a, a possibility worth considering. After all, attitudes towards marijuana have undergone shift over the years. The majority of Americans are now in favor of legalizing a fact that hasn't escaped the attention of those in power. Biden's decision aligns with this trend potentially strengthening his standing among younger constituents who typically support cannabis reform. But this isn't just about appealing to the youth. The decision could strike a chord with older adults too, many of whom have personally witnessed the destructive fallout of the war on drugs, seen families ripped apart and lives destroyed over nonviolent offenses. For them, this could represent a much-needed step towards justice. But, as with any political move, there are critics argue that it's a cosmetic measure a quick fix that doesn't tackle the underlying issues. 
Some question the timing, suggesting it's a strategic ploy to boost Biden's popularity in the lead-up to the election. The implications are indeed profound, but but it's possible political motives ignited the most conversation. As we step back and reflect on our journey into Biden's decision, what have we unearthed from this profound exploration? When we resume, we find ourselves having traversed the ever-evolving terrain of marijuana legislation and the notable resolution by President Biden to liberate those imprisoned for nonviolent cannabis-related offenses. This action has received applause as a profound stride towards justice and equality, gathering endorsement individuals, creatives, and advocates. We've ventured into the probable political catalyst behind this move. On the eve of an election it could be seen as a tactical maneuver to win over voters, specifically those within the young adult demographic. Regardless, let's not forget that political motivations and genuine attempts to initiate profound change can coexist. The repercussions of this resolution extend far and wide. It affects not just those behind bars for non-violent marijuana crimes but also sparks a wider discourse on the role of marijuana in our whether it's a thought-out political strategy or a sincere push for marijuana law reform, one thing is crystal clear. The conversation about marijuana and its place in our society is far from finished.